Well, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Uh, we are in a time of quarantine, so there's uh, n so everybody who's here today is here on video, uh, and we're just really glad you're here. Earlier today, we had a live video where we had uh, just wonderful times connecting with friends, and uh, we're so glad that you're joining us uh, in this version. Uh, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have done things that you told us not to. You said, if we do these things, it won't be good for us or our families or our communities or the world. And in many cases, we have heard what you said and did it anyway. And there are other things that you've impressed on us. This would be good to do, and we have just plugged our ears or refused to do it. And in some cases, we even knew that would have been great. And there's other things that we've done that we're just completely clueless. We have adopted a perspective that has blinded us to reality and we haven't even seen correctly how the things that we're doing are impacting others and your kingdom. And in spite of all the mess that we have to bring before you, God, you love us. And you speak words of compassion and forgiveness, and we are so grateful and so stunned at your mercy and so thankful that you are our God. So we confess before you all the things that we've done wrong. And we thank you that Jesus died so that we can have new life in you and that you give us the Holy Spirit anytime that we ask. So we ask now, Holy Spirit, please continue to fill us so that we can be renewed and return a new creature with a fresh start today and tomorrow. Thank you. We praise you. Amen. We're going to sing Beautiful Savior. I encourage you to sing along. Beautiful Savior, King of creation, Jesus shines pure, and all the 
some of you have seen a book that I uh, got a while back. Um, I haven't shown it to you very often because it's so heavy, but uh, I got this book, This May Not Work, and if you open this book up, you'll discover that it's all upside down every single page. Well, why is that? Well, that's because you're starting with this cover. And the real cover is, this might work. And if you start with the this might work cover, every page inside is right side up. And it's an interesting book. Some of you are going to have that opportunity throughout the coming week to choose which side of the book you read, uh, which, uh, whether you approach it from a this may not work or a this might work perspective, your life, and you will, depending on which perspective you choose, you may encounter quite a bit more grit and frustration and uh, obstacles because you're reading the text upside down. Unless you think, with God all things are possible. This looks like not what I intended, but I am going to choose to trust God, not what I can see, not my circumstances, not what I am afraid of. I'm going to trust God who loves me. That in fact, all of this that looks like it might not work, God promises to take and use it to something great for those who love God and are called according to God's promise. Uh, I have uh, some things that I'm trying to build into my schedule on a daily basis during this time when everyone is asked to be uh, at their home and, and not leaving very often. So uh, the government has said one of the things that you can do, uh, California government has said you're free to walk your dog to get out and get some exercise for you and your dog. And if you don't have a dog, I would encourage you to get out and walk your dog. Every day to get out into the sun or the rain, whatever it is, it's helpful for your uh, general, uh, it helps the work-life balance that's centered in the chemistry of your brain and your body. If you get out into the sunshine and into the fresh air, while you're staying at home most of the time. So uh, try each day to get out uh, and get some kind of exercise. Read your Bible. It's very important that you uh, read your Bible. It has information you cannot find anywhere else. Do something creative. So uh, it's possible to do things that are all consumptive. That is that other people have done and we're just the consumers. But it's really helpful for your you were created to be a creator. And, and so when we say do something creative, that doesn't only mean in the arts. Uh, fine if you're going to write a poem or uh, create a dance or create a, a painting or something, but do something creative, meaning you bring something into existence that didn't exist before. So that might be writing an app. It might be calling a grandmother. It might uh, be, it, but just doing anything that didn't, didn't exist before that needed you to call it into existence. Uh, try and do something like that each day. Do something helpful. Uh, it's easy when you're just on your own to just focus on your own stuff. And if you do something that is outward geared, doing something helpful, you'll find that over the course of the week, you'll have a much better week and last, thank God who loves you. Uh, visitors, once a week we make an announcement that is the same every day, every week, whether you come once or for a lifetime, you can hear it. Uh, if you come for a lifetime, you can hear it and let it soak in. And it has four parts. That is that God loves you. Jesus died so you can have new life today. The Holy Spirit will fill you anytime that you ask. 
and the message that Jesus asks that we bring to all the people we meet. God's kingdom is near. If you've got a Bible, I encourage you to hold it high and uh, say the words on the wall with us. The Bible is God's word to me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Amen. Well, today's message is, if you encounter an obstacle, persist. And many of you this week have encountered quite a few obstacles. This was our message for last week, but we couldn't get it to you. So it's our message for this week. So we encountered an obstacle here and we persisted. And many of you have been doing that also in your own lives, just with getting groceries, with uh, doing a lot of different things, things that you never thought there would be an obstacle. Suddenly it's, in some cases, a problem you haven't solved yet. So when you have a problem that you can't solve, it's helpful to take a brief time out to say, is this the right course? Am I at peace about this? Do I have God's spirit of peace in what I'm doing? Sometimes an obstacle shows up and it's God helping us to take a time out to realize that what we're working on shouldn't be done yet or in the way that we're doing it or by us. There's something about it that isn't quite right and we need to pause. Maybe we need to set it completely aside. But often obstacles come not because of God's provision for us in helping us to avoid things that aren't, uh, aren't for today, but sometimes obstacles come just to get in the way of good things. And often you'll discover if you're heading towards a breakthrough that the closer you get to a breakthrough, the more obstacles there are. The more inner self-doubt and chatter you'll hear, you shouldn't do this, who do you think you are, this is worthless, it'll never work. All of those negative ideas will increase the closer you get to a breakthrough. And the closer you get to a breakthrough, the more obstacles, the more people there will be trying to interrupt you, the more uh, things getting in the way. So it's helpful when you encounter an obstacle to take a brief time out to just check, am I at peace? and then to persist. Sometimes by doing the same thing, sometimes by doing the same thing with a little bit more gusto, sometimes by asking God, okay, God, what strategy would be helpful in this situation? Uh, many of us know that God helps us find our keys anytime that we ask. Uh, and most of the time we ask God too late after we've already squandered a half an hour searching the house finally sit down and say, God, I know you know where they are. And many, many of you have had the experience that as soon as you ask, you know where the keys are. Well, God, who can help you find your keys, is also willing to help you with things of far more consequence, far more value. Um, so, God, what can we do that would be strategic in some of the things of your kingdom's purpose where we're stuck, where we can't figure out how to, how to help call into being the things that you have said are already true. What can we do in those situations? And if you will ask, God will answer. So uh, we're gonna start in Luke 5 today, uh, 17th verse. And uh, it talks about a setting where Jesus was teaching. So as we look through the Gospel of Luke, we find that it's front-loaded with healing ministries. Uh, so there's one story after another of miracles that Jesus did and people that Jesus healed, dead that people uh, Jesus raised. And over time, those stories of all the healings and miracles gradually diminish, not because they quit happening, but having established that that was the kind of person that Jesus was, Luke then begins to ramp up the stories about what Jesus said. 
And so in Luke 5, we have uh, one of the uh, beginning stories of what Jesus was teaching. One day while Jesus was teaching, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were sitting by. So these would eventually become Jesus' enemies. They were the religious establishment and they were having their power threatened by Jesus who is bringing God's truth but in a way that threatened their authority and that threatened their livelihood and that um, offered for them an opportunity to do what God wanted them to do, but in a way that would challenge them. So they were at this point coming to check Jesus out to see what he was teaching firsthand and they were coming from all over. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. So all over they were coming to hear Jesus and they were listening to him. And on, in this particular occasion, the power of the Lord was with him to heal. So one of the things that tells you is the power to heal isn't always present. One of the things you learn by reading the gospel is that often people can shut down God's power to heal. So God still has the power to heal, but people put a fake ceiling way lower so that even though God's power is still present, people will only accept a small amount. And so what, what we allow, we can allow a little bit of God's mercy or an amazing amount of God's mercy depending on, on our reaction to what God is doing in the world. Uh, in this occasion, the power of the Lord was with him to heal, and just then some men came in carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. So Jesus is in an environment where there's plenty of opportunity to heal someone. Some people come in with someone who's paralyzed, who wants to be made new, wants to be healed, and they can't get to Jesus. There's an obstacle. There's something in the way. And what's in the way is all the other people. Jesus is surrounded by a crowd, not just of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, but people from all over have come to hear him and they can get within, they can get to the outside of the crowd, but they can't get any closer or they can't get close enough to get this man into the presence of Jesus. What do you do when you encounter an obstacle, when something gets in the way? We don't know if these uh, people took a time out to check, but if they had, their motives were pure, they were doing something that was godly, God desires that all people be healed. So what they were doing, they would have had peace about it, but there's an obstacle. They could have just given up. We tried, it's too bad, we couldn't get any closer. But if you've ever gone to a concert with the determination to get up front, you will discover that you can worm your way up front no matter how packed it is. Or you can quite a ways back think, I can't get any further than this. The people carrying this, this paralyzed man were the kind of people who said, we're gonna keep going. God's in this, there's something in the way right now, but we're gonna make a way around it. We're gonna find a solution. Now the solution they found might not be one that you would have had the nerve to carry out. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus, but finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and tore it apart. They let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. So as they're uh, getting close, they get jump on the roof. So Jesus is in the house. And so you can hear them getting on the roof. Then there's probably some smoke and some dust and dirt and things falling down as they're tearing apart the tiles to, they're not just trying to get a little hole. 
They're trying to get a hole big enough for a man on a pallet. So they've got to do quite a bit of roof clearing out in order to get a man down in front of Jesus. It takes some time. And do you suppose the people who are on the first floor getting stuff in their eye and having stuff come down on top of them, do you suppose the people on the first floor were saying, oh, what a great idea, you should do that, that's awesome. It's much more likely, isn't it, that the people in the first floor were saying, stop that. You're tearing apart the house. What are you thinking? It's very likely they had opposition. Very likely they had people yelling at them. It's possible they had some people trying to stop them, not just with, with words, but physically coming after them, but what they were able to do before anyone stopped them was to not be stopped by the obstacle and to get the paralyzed man in front of Jesus. Right at a time when the power to heal is present. So if you encounter an obstacle, persist. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven you and Was it really that not obvious what the man needed? He's paralyzed. But Jesus sees us as we are completely, not just the outer shell that everybody else sees, but deep into our spirits deep into our minds, into our beings. What do we really need? I can't tell you how many times people have come for prayer for something that, that they really wanted because it would have been very helpful. And God often did what they asked, but did something a hundred times greater. Used a small pain to get them to come forward and ask for prayer so God could heal a lifelong hurt. And in this case, Jesus looks at the paralyzed man and realizes he might want to walk, but what he really wants is to be forgiven. So Jesus speaks to that need first, to that opportunity first. Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Now just so you know, this is, this is what Jesus says to you as well. If you have something that you have been ashamed of, Jesus speaks the same word to you. Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Well, we said at the start that there were people all over, from all over, who were there to evaluate. They weren't there to worship, they weren't there, they were just there to evaluate, and some of them had come to criticize. And so they said, okay, who is this? Who does he think he is? He's speaking blasphemies, because there's nobody that can forgive sins but God. So who can forgive sins but God alone? This person isn't God, so he should not be forgiving sins. That was the charge that they made. I don't know if you've ever given a party where you've accidentally got people in your party like this that are kind of just turning everything sour and making everything less fun than it could have been. Um, but while Jesus is trying to address the deepest need of this paralyzed man, there are people putting up obstacles to try to stop him. 
and it'll be like that for you too. The closer you get to breakthrough, the more people will try to intervene and say, you shouldn't have the nerve to try and do something like that. But Jesus directly confronts them. He persists and says, why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, stand up and walk? And if you don't understand the construction that Jesus has here, in terms of just speaking the words, both of them are just as easy to say. Your sins are forgiven you, easy enough to say, no, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, no tongue twisters there, right? Same as stand up and walk, no tongue twisters there. So they're both just as easy to say, but Jesus' point is, anyone can say your sins are forgiven because who could tell if they are or not? But if you say stand up and walk, you can tell if the person is able to pull it off or not because this man's been paralyzed and for most people who say stand up and walk, nothing's gonna happen. So Jesus' point is, between these two, if you have the authority to do it, the one that's going to be really obvious is saying, standing up and walk. But anybody can say your sins are forgiven you, and you ought to. You ought to say it to the people that uh, are offending you, and maybe you just need to say it quietly to yourself. Their sins are forgiven. I can treat them differently because their sins are forgiven. Sometimes they may be in a, in a state where they want to hear it from you, in which case you can announce to them, your sins are forgiven. Something Jesus did for you. Jesus continued speaking to these people who are criticizing him, but so that you know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he turned and said to the man who is paralyzed, I say to you, stand up, take your bed, and go home. And immediately, he stood up before them. The man had come because he had friends who loved him and were willing to carry him all the way to Jesus. And when they couldn't get close, they got close enough, but not close enough to get healing to their friend. When they couldn't get close enough because of the crowd, they found a way around the crowd, even though for some people it would have been too much. And they would have been criticized and told, you should not destroy a person's house like that. And they got their friend in front of Jesus, and their friend had two amazing, life-changing things happen. He received forgiveness and the assurance of it. And he got back the ability to walk. Uh, he took what he'd been lying on and went to his home glorifying God. This week, pretty sure you're gonna encounter an obstacle. Some of those obstacles could be from God, might be someone working on God's behalf to tell you, wait, this isn't quite the time, or someone else ought to do it, or your attitude isn't quite right yet, you really <laughs> need to tweak what you're doing a little bit before you continue on. Sometimes an obstacle is to slow us down, and it's a good thing. But much of the time, obstacles are not there with an agenda. It's just that the good things are hidden and blocked. And they would have been discovered a long time ago if there wasn't a lot of rubble around them, a lot of obstacles. And so to get to the good things, you're going to be guaranteed to have to go through obstacles. Otherwise, they would have been found a long time ago. If you encounter obstacles, sometimes 
it'll be not God trying to prevent you from an error, not just the ordinary rubble that blocks the way of good things, but sometimes it'll be an enemy trying to stand in the way of something good that God desires done and that you have the ability, but only if you persevere through what the enemy is trying to do. It's worth it when you're doing something that's valuable and godly to persist. If you're ready for a change, ask Jesus to be your Lord. Ask for the Holy Spirit to fill you. Read your Bible every day. It has information you can't find anywhere else. Find a church where you can grow in faith and do what Jesus tells you to do. Why don't you stand? You can stand even if you're watching this, um, unless you're at work or somewhere you shouldn't, uh, and then we'll pray. God, we are so grateful that Jesus sees us, not just the outward shell that other people see, Jesus sees us all the way through. So Jesus, when we come into Jesus' presence for healing, Jesus knows the broken parts of our body, but far deeper than that, Jesus knows the broken parts of our spirit and the broken parts of our mind, our thinking, the ways that we observe the world that are just completely wrong. Jesus can see all of us and speak healing, not just into our surface needs, but into our deepest needs. We are so grateful, Jesus, for the chance to come into your presence. And some of us have friends who have brought us to you and we're so thankful for them. Help us to also be those kinds of friends to others. That when we see people in need, we pick them up and bring them directly to you, even if there's obstacles, that we can bring them to your presence so that they can be healed and restored and set free. We're so grateful for all that you do in our lives, God, and for all your great mercy to us. We praise you. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing Holy, 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 and uh, you can just listen, but it'd be more, it'll be more wonderful if you sing along. Let's pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look on you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Have a great day and a wonderful tomorrow. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen.